We are travelling from the flat grasslands of Somerset to the rugged mountain landscapes and icy cold locks of Scotland. It's going to be an epic adventure where we take our camper van across the country in our ongoing search for otters. In my entire life, I have seen wild otters on just two occasions. One of them was in Wiltshire on a wildlife reserve where the otter popped its head up out of the river for about half a second and I managed to get a really lovely photo, nice and crisp, of a twig with a blurry otter behind it. The second time was in Scotland. I actually have a video of this and if I can figure out how to put one of those snazzy pop-up things in the corner, it will probably be here somewhere. One of the best places to see otters in the wild is the Isle of Mull in Scotland. And every year, without fail, my Instagram feed blows up with hundreds of really awesome photos of otters. We've always wanted to go, but if you look at a map, you will see Somerset, where we live, is here. And if you find Scotland and look for the Isle of Mull, which is all the way over here, you'll see it's about 6,000 miles away. I find long distance driving to be terrible. I get so bored and so tired but if you look at the cost of flying up to Scotland and hiring a car and staying in a cottage, it's just not something we can really do. So if we're gonna go, the only really way we can do it is to take the camper van and drive up and camp on the island. Angie has been practicing driving the van and we think we're gonna split up into lots of two hour stints. Anytime I look at the sat nav, it will always just say, you've only got two hours to your next stop. And that way it's kind of like a mental hack for me that I won't wanna open the door and jump out on the motorway out of boredom. In a few days time, we're gonna drive up to Glasgow early one morning and spend the night there. The next morning, we're gonna get up and go over to Oban, where we're gonna catch the ferry to Mull. We're gonna to go to our campsite, spend a few days looking for otters, and then we're gonna to head to our second campsite on the northern side of the island, where we're gonna have a bit of a holiday. Otters are quite elusive, so whilst I'm hopeful we'll be able to see one, it's definitely not a guaranteed. Anything with wildlife isn't guaranteed. So we do actually have a secret weapon in our back pocket, but you'll have to find out later what that is. Just like that, we were on mole. If only it really took 90 seconds like it did in the video. The weather was lovely and sunny, so whilst I was tempted to sit in the sun with a well-earned bear, we decided to get a head start on the otter spotting. We drove to the nearest lock and began looking along the shore for otters. Incredibly, we actually saw one as it crossed the road right in front of us and ran up the side of the hill into its halt. I wasn't expecting to see an otter, so I didn't manage to get it on video, but here is a really bad photo. Even if we don't see another otter for the rest of the trip, at least I will be able to say that I saw one. having a bit of a lion and we are off this morning hopefully otter spotting so we're off to a lock about I don't know about half an hour away from the campsite um, 
it's low tide at the moment so fingers crossed we will see something um, it's also quite overcast today which I think from a photography point of view is going to be better as, as lovely as the sun was yesterday it could be a bit harsh when you're trying to take photos so yeah wish us luck watch this space we've driven up and down the side of the lock now haven't managed to find any otters yet we've decided to park at the top end of the lock and walk down instead of driving because when you drive you can't really keep an eye on the lock as well and you can't see movement of anything in the water um, the other issue is that there's not a lot of places to park so you end up trying to squeeze into a passing place which you're not really meant to do because obviously they're for passing because it's all single track lane so we parked up in a little grass area we're walking down and try and find some otters and then we're going to go for lunch then probably explore the other side of the lock because the ladies just told us that's a good place to spot otters also, we're in the ass end of nowhere in Scotland, on the middle of an island next to a lock. And on the other side of a lock, I can hear a cuckoo in a small copse of trees. So it's amazing that we spend so long looking for cuckoos and then they're just everywhere mocking us. just been talking to a guy who stopped in a pickup truck as we were walking along the road he asked us if we've seen an otter yet and we said sadly not um, and he's told us there's one just on the other side of this lock you can see my hand pointing over there um, that was there 10 minutes ago he said it's a male from last year so probably gonna skip lunch shockingly and we're gonna head over there now to see if we can find it and if it's still there so we'll be quick drove round the side of the lock where that chap told us to go and have a look and there were three or four people lying on the ground photographing an otter as it was going in and out of the lock with some food. So we got some photos there, don't really think I got anything spectacular, you know, nothing that I'm going to print A0 and put on my wall at home. So we finally got round to having our lunch and delicious super noodles because <laughs> I just like super noodles really. Sorry, there's a van, a car coming and I really don't like filming myself in front of people. <laughs> After an exciting hour or two, we headed off to the far end of the lock to carry on our search. Sadly, we didn't see any more otters, but we did see lots of interesting birds and managed to get some great photos of them, including this one, which is my first time ever seeing a common plover. The weather started to turn at this point and it began to rain quite hard, so we made our way back to the campsite to get ready for tomorrow, which was our last day searching for otters. I was getting pretty desperate at this point, as although we had seen a few otters, I was still waiting for that one really epic photo, which was so far eluding me. Do you remember me saying that we had a secret weapon in our back pocket? So we do actually have a secret weapon in our back pocket. And you'd have to find out later what it is, but you'll have to find out later what that is. Well, that secret weapon is a man, and that man's name was Pete. Pete has thousands of hours of experience of otter spotting and knows the island like the back of his hand because Pete is a professional wildlife photographer and workshop guide. We decided to book a wildlife tour with Pete because we wanted to maximise our chance of seeing any otters whilst doing so in a way that was safe for the otters and didn't cause them any harm. 
I had originally planned to try and video this tour, but I decided not to in the end for two reasons. Number one, whilst they are good value, they definitely aren't cheap, and I wanted to maximise my chance of getting photos of otters rather than videoing myself videoing otters, if that makes sense. And B, this is Pete's job and career, and it didn't really feel right videoing him going about his day and then just sticking it on the internet for everyone to watch. But I will give you two bits of advice that I learned on this workshop. Number one, otters can't see you or smell you when they're underwater. So if you can figure out how long they go underwater for, that gives you a little bit of a window to move along the beach without scaring them. And number two, if you can figure out what the otter is actually doing, whether it's hunting and feeding, napping, or just moving along the coast, you can use this to figure out where to go to get in front of the otter, because it's definitely not a good idea to go chasing it along the shore. On our workshop with Pete, we were lucky enough to see several otters, and a couple of them were quite close. We got to watch them swim, hunt, eat, nap, and even rub themselves dry on the seaweed. Mole is an incredible place, and I can say with certainty that it definitely lives up to the hype. It's one of the best places we've ever visited, and I cannot wait to go back next year. But you've probably had enough of me talking now, so here's what you've really been waiting for. Otters.